Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So today I'm sharing this very simple idea of hand stitching or sewing or embroidering on paper. I'm sure that most of you guys already know this technique, um, but perhaps this video will inspire you and maybe marry the two worlds together. You know, the world of journal making and embroidering. So um, you can you can stitch just words like for example this journal this can go on a cover of a journal um you can stitch sentences whole sentences see this one here i've done um for my sewing theme journal so this is a really good idea for themed journal for example you can write this is my word of the year you can write your name you can write the per the other person's name if you're gifting a journal you can write their name you know down the bottom or you know whatever um, themed journal again like maybe Valentine's Day you can for example I've done this one um, this is just a you know I drew a whimsical house and then I did it and it looks so cool like so you can have something like this on a wall maybe not black and maybe not you know but it would be cool in a in a kid's um, room for example so uh, there's so many options you can do with this and this is such an easy technique and um, in fact it's so easy that let me just show you this my four-year-old daughter wrote her name in her own words and stitched it and this is her first ever go at doing this she's four years old and then my son who is seven saw um ella having fun and he wanted in on the action this isn't his name um he just chose this word because he's mega and you know he's a very boyish boy and into boy things and he uh, you know had so much fun with this so what I'm trying to say is that you can have, you know, this is so easy, it's mindless, you can do it while watching TV, you can do it with your kids, and it can be an activity you do with your grandkids, and I promise you they're going to love it, and you will love it, and you'll have so much fun. So, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so these are my instructions here. Um, so, first off, let's start with choosing your paper. So, you can choose, you can do any paper. Um, this here, I've chosen this one, it's a cardstock it works better on cardstock because you know obviously um it's not going to fall apart as easy as say something like this would you know this paper you still can do it the only thing is if you're going to use paper like this you have to have uh, a lot more space in between the punched holes and you have to be a lot more careful when sewing so you want to choose your paper i uh, for these ones here i've used a file folder so it's not as thick as this cardstock. I just use one of these, you know, file folders. So anything that has some sort of thickness to it. Um, so and the next thing you want to do is you want to write your word or your sentence or your desi uh, design. So, you know, whatever you want to do. But for the purposes of this video, I have decided to do a word. So I'm going to do hope. And the reason why I decided to do hope is because... P has a loop, so I just wanted to sort of show you. So let's go with, I'm just going to, going to you know, write help here. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to punch holes on your writing. So firstly, I'm going to put this underneath so that I don't damage my desk. This is just a mouse pad. You can use um, books or, you know, whatever uh, to put underneath to protect your surface and then you want to punch holes so I'm just using this I have this little pokey tool you can just use a needle like you can use you know whatever you have at hand anything that's going to make holes but you don't want it to be too uh, you don't want the holes to be too thick so you're punching the holes approximately uh, one quarter inch apart I mean I don't measure this is just I just put it there just to give you something to go on but so let's say for example here we have hope so we have we will need a hole here where the two meet. So that's a definite hole that we're going to need. And then I'm going to put one in the middle. And then, so that's sort of, you know, I sort of look at that. And then over here, I might do, because it's a longer, I might do something like this. And then I might do just the one in the middle. So the further apart your um, holes that you're puncturing, the less chance of your paper tearing. If you have a loop, and this is more um, evident in, say, for example, if you see here, the E has uh, a loop here. 
which means that my holes have to be really close together otherwise you're going to have straight lines if it's a long distance in between holes that's going to create a, a straight line so with loops you they need to be a slightly closer so you can see how the these uh, holes here they're very close so I had to be very very careful doing this one um, so that's another thing to keep in mind but because my letter O and P they're quite large um, I, I don't think I'm going to have that problem so they don't have to be quite as close as these ones here so I'm just going to do approximately like this Okay, so that's done. I have punctured the holes. Let me see if you can see this better. So first I've written the word and then I've punctured the holes. So you can see there's a lot more space in between these ones here than these ones here on the loop. Um, okay, so the next thing you want to do is choose your thread. Uh, you might have already chosen your thread, um, but actually let's let's just talk about the needle for a second so for the one that my son did he's done it on cardboard um he used a really thick needle like this so obviously the thread that you use has to be able to go through the uh, needle of the the eye of the needle if i was to use this really thick one here on my design it would make these holes so thick that they might um, the, the cardboard might rip in between so you don't want a really thick needle and you don't want a really thin standard needle because um, it's uh, I mean you could do it but your your thread will need to be really thin and once again if your thread is really thin it will easily it, um, what am I trying to say it will tear the paper easier this is the needle that I used I really don't know what size this is I just have it in my stash um, so the loop up here the eye of the needle is quite large I don't know if you can see I hope that you can um, and it's you know slightly blunt here so it just makes the uh, searching for the hole on the other side much easier when you have a blunt end okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose our thread so for the sake of this video I want to do um, a dark one just so you can see so I'm going to use this one okay you can do different colors um, like I did here or like I did here you can play around and really take this to town <laughs> you can have fun with this okay so uh, you want to choose your length so don't worry too much about um, you know picking the I, I really don't know how to calculate how much thread I need for this word um, but it's very I'm going to choose a really short amount so that once I run out I can show you how to, you can just very easily continue um, stitching okay so I have um, threaded the needle um, probably easier to tie a knot on one end and you know tie a double knot so that the knot you want the knot to be slightly you know larger than the hole because you don't want it to go sort of through the hole I'm doing it three times because I didn't do it properly they were the knots are next to each other not on top of each other so I just want to make sure that I have a bulging area bulging knot okay so I have tied a knot knot on one end and I have threaded the needle on the other end and now we're going to start on the back side and you want to start you can start wherever you want I usually start right at the beginning here so you're starting at the back and then you're going into the next hole and then when you're at the back you go into the next hole And then when you come back to the front this is you always look at your front when you come back to the front you don't want to go into the next hole because you will have this space here so you have to go back you go back to fill in the space and that's what I mean 
you're filling in on the right side this is your right side on the next side on the wrong side you are not filling in if you have spaces so you have a space here you don't need to fill that in because this is the wrong side so you're going into the next hole and then you need to fill that space so you're going back in okay so now you've come to the end of this line we're next so next i'm going to do this here so i will go into the next hole which is the middle here fill in the space into the next hole fill in the space and now you're going back up here so it really depends on how much thread you have left. I've cut myself a really short piece. So now I'm, I've run out of thread. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop. You can tie a knot. You don't have to tie a knot. You can just weave it in into the ones, into the loops you've already got at the back. So I can just leave, I'm just going to leave that as it is here. Maybe I will just trim it a little bit. In terms of the back, the back is going to look really messy. Let me show you my sons. Look how messy that looks at the back. So in terms of the back, you can always, um, you can cover it up or, or if you're sticking it down on the cover, then it doesn't matter. Um, but the back is going to look messy. You can put some masking tape. Uh, on the back too so and if you're using a really thin paper masking tape putting some masking tape at the back will help to hold that paper together Okay, so now I'm beginning again and you just begin from where you left off. So you find the hole, that's, that's the one. Always start at the back. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you one thing and then I will speed the rest up. So if it happens, and it probably will, that you rip your paper, uh, that the paper rips in between two stitches, don't um, throw it out. I want to use that saying, uh, but I don't know if it's if it goes with what I'm saying. Don't throw out the baby with the bath water or something like that. So it can be fixed. So let me just show you. I think on this one here, there's actually a few spaces where my paper um, ripped so but you can't see it because it's still i was very very gentle and i was very i just still went through the holes anyway so this one here it completely ripped here and some of these smaller ones and even i think it was here where i have my e um the two holes ripped so it became one big hole but i still did my thing i still went in and then back through you know like i still kept going just the way i would if it didn't happen and i think here you will see i actually uh, after it ripped on the a and then i couldn't it just wasn't working so what i did is i put a little bit of masking tape over the rip and then i stitched anyway I, you know so it's fixable okay so now we finish the h we're going to the o and i'm just going to start wherever let's say i'll start here and then keep going actually you know what I decided to show you what happens if you if you have a rip so let's see if this will work if this doesn't work then I'll have to do this whole thing again let's see 
let's say you have a hole here and it's really close so see how that's really really close that hole and that hole and let's say now I need to go back into my next hole which is this one here and let's say I rip it so I need to be you okay let's see it doesn't want to rip now okay there we go so I ripped it I ripped the hole so what am I gonna do let's say there's two things I can do I don't know how many things I can do but I could just simply go into the next hole forget about that hole altogether and that's going to be covered so even though there's a rip there things don't fall apart right I can just keep going or let me keep let me just go back if that hole is really important for whatever reason we can put some masking tape on the on the other side you can do two layers of masking tape um, and then just go through the hole so that's it everything is going to be covered covered if you have a rip it, it will be covered anyway so that's it so now I need to go to the next hole because this one's not working anymore so I'm just going to go back out and I'm going to go into my next hole and I will cover the shameful shameful no I'm just joking um, it's not a shameful mistake it's just something that will happen probably eventually especially if you're writing smaller words like I did on that um, like I did on this one here so it's bound to happen somewhere but if it does don't panic don't be too you know scared that you're going to rip paper so there are ways to fix it Now I just want to say um, I've come to the end of the P so where do I begin? So if I, I can start anywhere to start my E. If I start here I'm, I'm using all this thread. I'm wasting all this thread. So I tend to start at a closest point. So I, I'll start here. Okay that's done I'm just going to go to the back and weave in you can just weave it in like this you know pull it through you can maybe tie a knot so or just weave it in so that's it and then I cut options for the back side you can um, put a piece of tea dyed paper down this isn't tea dyed but let's say you put a piece of tea dyed paper down and then um, you know just sew around cut it off and then you have like a little journaling spot or you've at least hidden the back or you know it really depends on what you're going to use it for but there are options of what you can do so this is our word this is our boo-boo here where um, I did the um, puncturing the holes too close on purpose to show you how to fix if you perforate your paper or if the if it rips in a section you can your imagination can go wild with this one I think with in terms of what you can use it for I'm so proud of the ones that my kids did I'm so I mean four-year-old a seven-year-old amazing they can do their own name and and have it hanging on their door you know to go in their room my daughter was so proud when she did this and then my son was like oh what's going on there I want to I want to give it a go too you know so I mean and with this one I had so much fun with this one it was like I can't draw and I drew this house and it looks so much better when it's embroidered and it's, you know nice and whimsical and stuff so um, I hope that your mind is swarming with ideas I think that was my purpose for this video I know that most of you already know how to do this it's very easy very simple you've probably done it a million times before but now perhaps you can you know start using it in your journals um, so yes I hope that you enjoyed this video in any case 
and let me know what you think and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!